Praise God. I love that worship service today. Did you, do you feel the presence of the Lord in this place? So good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Are you glad you're here? Amen. I'm glad you're here too. Let us turn in our Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We're going to be reading beginning at verse 21. Matthew 7, verse 21. Stand if you are able, please, as I read Matthew chapter 7, beginning at verse 21. These words. Cut to my very heart one evening. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Let us pray. Oh, Father in heaven, we give you thanks for this beautiful day. We give you thanks for your goodness to us, your love, your mercy, your grace. The many blessings that you pour upon us, though we do not deserve it. Father in heaven, it is my desire that you speak to us this morning in a very real way. Speak to our hearts, we pray. Father in heaven, if we leave here having heard from Pastor Kimball, we will leave with absolutely nothing of any value. But Lord, if we leave here today having heard from you in our spirit, heard from you by your precious Holy Spirit, we will leave here with a treasure and that is my desire today, that we hear from you. So, Father in heaven, please speak to us by your precious Holy Spirit. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you are saying to your people this morning. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. What is your life built on? What is your life built on? The words we read here are very real. And they will be spoken to many. Jesus says, not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? You see before you People that fully expect to enter into the kingdom. Listen to what they say. Lord, we've prophesied in your name. We've cast out devils and done many wonderful works. We call you Lord. He says, not everybody that calls me Lord will enter into the kingdom, but only those who do the will of my Father which is in heaven. 
It's not enough to say, Lord, to come to church and say, Lord, Lord, and to do all these things. Listen to the things they did. Have you even done any of these things? Prophesied in his name, cast out devils, done many wonderful works. Have, how many of us have even done those things? And yet he says to them, depart from me. I never knew you. Let's continue reading. Verse 24, there, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. Obviously, it would fall. And great was the fall of it. <clears throat> so what I want to ask you this morning is, what is your life built on? Is your life built upon the solid rock or is it built upon sand? And the way you know whether it's built upon the rock or if it's built on sand is if your life is built upon the Lord Jesus Christ, if he is your desire, if he is the one you love, if he's the one you seek to please instead of yourself, then you are building your life upon the rock. But if you're building your life upon other things, you're building on sand, and eventually your life will fall apart. There are many things today which people may build their lives upon. What is your foundation? Some people build their life on building great wealth, amassing great wealth. And they, they dedicate their life to it. They, they build up, sometimes people build up fortunes of millions, even billions of dollars. Great wealth. But if they don't have Jesus, they're building on sand. Some people build their life on trying to attain power. Power. Power among others. Power over others. This is so important to them. And they spend their lives, they dedicate their lives to obtaining power and recognition. Well, the applause of men and the adoration of men is so shallow and empty. If that is what you seek, you're building your life on sand. Power, fame, wealth. Some singers, they just want to be the most popular singer, the best singer that there is. So people can applaud them and think how wonderful they are. They're building their lives on sand. I've known a great many gospel singers in my life. And some are really worshipers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And some are not. All you have to do is just get to know them a little bit and you know whether their life is focused on and centered around the Lord Jesus Christ or if it isn't. You know, just because a person's religious doesn't mean they're a Christian any more than being in a garage makes you a car. I knew a gospel singer... It was just, there was a big crowd, and he was just praising the Lord and praising the Lord. And, between, and, and he took his microphone away, and he was absolutely cussing a blue streak at the sound person. And then he turned right back around and said, ah, praise the Lord. Does that fit? It doesn't fit. You see, religion, going to church, Singing for the Lord, whatever you do, is not going to save you. There's one thing that saves you, and that is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And it is applied to those who give their life to Him. Some people may build their lives upon being a, a sex symbol, trying to 
attract those of the opposite sex. Some people live their lives going after the opposite sex and all of that. Some people build their lives on their friends, their children, their, their family. These are all important, and I don't deny that. But what are you building your life on? If you're not building your life on the Lord Jesus Christ, you're building on sand. What did Jesus say to those who, who were actually out there doing ministry, and they're standing there before the judgment seat of Christ, fully expecting to get in? He says to them what? I what? I never knew you. You can go to church all your life and still not be a Christian. The Christian is the person who follows the Lord Jesus Christ, who has given their life to him, Amen. who thinks not of themselves first, but of him first and his holy kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yes. Some people base their life upon what they teach, what they preach. It's got to be Jesus. Your life must be built upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Not a doctrine, not a song, not, not an activity, not a talent. Talent can go. Beauty can go. There's a great many cover girl models in their early 20s, very few in their late 80s. Beauty goes away. Wealth can come and go in a heartbeat. What is your life built on? The only sure foundation is our Lord Jesus Christ and His Holy Word. If you build your life on anything else, anything else, you're building your life on sand and you will fall apart. The storms of life come, you will fall. Don't sell yourself short. Let's go to the book of Genesis now. Are you still with me? Amen. Genesis chapter 25. Verse 27 and following. Let's back up a little bit to verse 24. And when her days were to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. This is, we're talking about the, we're reading about the birth of Esau and of Jacob. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took on, took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob, and Isaac was threescore years old when he bare them. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter and a man, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. <laughs> and Jacob sawed pottage, and Esau came from the field and he was faint and Esau said to Jacob feed me I pray thee with that same red pottage for I for I am faint therefore was his name called Edom and Jacob said sell me this day thy birthright and Esau said behold I am at the point to die and what profit shall this birthright do to me and Jacob said swear me this day and they swear unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink, and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Now I want to ask you, if you were Esau, and you had a birthright, and that birthright, we've studied it in our Bible studies, it was a great and wonderful birthright. It wasn't just an amount of money. We're talking about the promises of God uh, to be a nation and company of nations, to be the head and not the tail. All of this comprised the birthright. And Esau sold it for what? 
a bowl of bean soup. Now, is that stupid or what? And you think, well, how could anybody possibly be that stupid to sell a wonderful birthright for a bowl of bean soup? But I submit to you today that people do it all the time. The wonderful blessings that they can enjoy and experience living a life for God. Walking in sweet fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. The wonderful treasures that that will bring. And they throw it away for bean soup. How many young people have I counseled with in my years of ministry with young people? And they ruin their lives on drugs, alcohol, whatever, sex. They just, hey, it's, it's here and it's right now and it seems like a lot of fun. So they, they sell their birthright for a bowl of bean soup and they regret it later. They always regret it. Don't, don't, don't sell yourself short. Think about it. How many young people have forfeited the good things of God for the immediate gratification that comes from the bean soup offered to them by the world? Don't do it. It isn't worth it. It may bring pleasure for a season, but in the end there is, there is nothing but regrets. I want to tell you today a, a tale of two singers, George Beverly Shea and Elvis Presley. You know, fame is a powerful thing, but it has its price. George Beverly Shea was attending Bible school in Ottawa, Ontario, where, he, where this person that's writing this was teaching. His name is Barclay Warren. And he loved to sing. After more training in New York City, he was given an audition at one of the radio stations and was offered a contract. He asked that he might sing gospel songs, for that was his heart, to sing for the Lord. He was told that he might use one occasionally, but that he would have to use the songs on the hit parade. That would be the main focus, to sing secular songs. Once in a while, a, a Christian song, they would, they would say that would be all right, but you're going to be singing the songs from the hit parade. That's what we would be hiring you for. Well, what would he do? He wanted to sing for the Lord, but yet this was awfully tempting a contract with a radio station, fame. What would he do? His mother was praying. One Saturday night she placed a poem on the piano in the morning. George was supposed to sing in a church and he sat down at the piano to practice what he was going to be singing and he saw the poem. The poem was... I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name. Yes. Amen. We all know what George Beverly Shea did. He turned down the contract. And for all he knew, it might be the end of things for him as far as uh, any chance of obtaining any kind of notoriety as a singer. But we know what happened. He was offered later a position with a Chicago radio station where he might use gospel songs that he loved. And while he was there, he met Billy Graham, and of course the rest is history. He was faced with, what do I do? Do I sing for the Lord Jesus Christ and fulfill that which is what I desire, or do I go for the gold? He turned down the contract and chose the Lord Jesus. 
and I know that his mother had, and I'm sure she was so delighted to know that she had a part in his decision by placing that poem on the piano. He wrote the music for I'd Rather Have Jesus. Then there was Elvis Presley. Those who knew him know that there was a point at which he thought, you know, he might want to be a preacher. And he loved gospel music. He really did. And he went to all those gospel, all night gospel singings in Memphis. He was so poor, he couldn't get in. So J.D. Sumner, if you ever heard of him, he'd let him in the back way, the back door. And he loved going to those things. He loved gospel music, and he had thought, I might be a preacher. And he felt kind of the call to be a preacher, but what did he do? He chose the opposite direction. He was offered a contract, and man, he went after it. And he did become very famous. In fact, I don't know if there's any place in the world where you can go and nobody, where, where people do not know who he is. And what he looks like. So he got the fame. But what came with it? He died on his bathroom floor. From a heart attack. From overuse of prescription drugs. Those who knew him knew that he wasn't happy. He couldn't go anywhere. So here we have George Beverly Shea. He chose the high road, and Elvis Presley chose the low road. I believe it was the low road. Wonderful voice. But he didn't use it for the Lord Jesus Christ, not, not only. He did sing gospel, but he sang all this other stuff too. He's not known really for his gospel. He's known for being the king of rock and roll. Well, I submit to you that George Beverly Shea lived a much better life than Elvis Presley. He lived a lot longer. He lived to be over 100 years old. And he also was very well known. Elvis passed away at the age of 42. A mess. He was a mess. Some people might say, well, I can do both. I can I can." be in both worlds, and a lot of people try it. I can do both. I can live in both worlds. Well, not according to Christ, you can't. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. 24, excuse me. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. What is your life built on? I do not know why, but for some reason last night, late last night, I was encouraged by the Holy Spirit to bring a message that would challenge our hearts. You see, I happen to believe that since he did that, there is at least one person in this room that is building their life on sand. Is it you? I try to follow this, the leading of the Lord Jesus Christ whenever I do what I do. Sometimes I get up and I don't even know what I'm going to preach. I have to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. And there's times when I do not know until I get up to preach what I'm going to preach on. And the Bible says, you know, whenever you're standing before men, I'll give you the words to say. I need to know and you need to know. What is your life built on? Is your life built upon the solid rock of Scripture, the Lord Jesus Christ?
Do you seek after him? Or do you seek after the many pleasures that this world affords? This word is the most valuable thing that this world affords. This word brings life and light in the darkness. Just having a form of godliness is not enough. Going to church is not enough. Being a member of this or that church, this or that denomination, doesn't get you squat. What gets you into the kingdom of heaven is being born again by the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, there are those who try, I guess, to save themselves. Their religion is based on works, but our faith, the true faith, the true religion is built upon the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and faith in that atoning blood. Oh, so many people I've known in my life, church people, but they weren't serious about the Lord. They didn't give them the time of day throughout the week. And when they were at church, they wouldn't pay attention. What is your life built upon? You see, this is an eternal question. This is a very, this is the most important question you can ask yourself. And the answer to this question determines your eternal status. Because I assure you, there will come a time at which he will say, let him who is filthy be filthy still. Let him who is righteous be righteous still. That's the end. So what is your life built on? I want us to consider this today. And I'm going to sing a song at this point. Tabitha, would you come up here? As I sing this song, I want you to think about it. What is your life built on? Are you resting in the fact that you are a church member? Are you resting in your ancestry? Yeah, I, my, my people have been churchgoers all, all my, you know, set, going back generations and generations. That's not going to save you. What is your life built on? I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold I'd rather be his than have riches untold I'd rather have Jesus than have I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain or be
I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his hope. built on. If your life isn't built upon the Lord Jesus Christ, that solid foundation, today, do not harden your heart. Come to Jesus. Amen. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you have religion? Have you been in a church all your life? Fine. Fine. Do you know Jesus? That's the question. This altar is open as we sing our hymn of invitation. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs>